Okay. Um, in pain man, it sounds like, uh, and this happens to everybody, and it'll happen, uh, unfortunately, again and again, and we'll always kind of come back to center, but there was like a dip in conviction. And a dip in conviction can come with just learning a lot in the industry. And then, you know, the more customers that we see, you'll get these customers that had a bad experience and, well, solar is really not that good for the environment because the panels got to go underground. And then, like you mentioned, when life kind of jumps on our back. So when you started and you got trained and you came down there and you've heard about how great this thing was, and you had that light bulb moment and you was like, this is crazy. They don't have to pay anything. Like, you know, you were on fire for it. And then yeah. as time went on, whether you realize it or not, that original light started to get a little bit dim because of both wife and then like probably just like just the stress of being on the doors more like just the wear and tear over time. So it's like the thing that kind of keeps people in it for the longest is always keeping their conviction high and doing the things to add to that conviction really every single day. And I love even being able to hear just like parts of, uh, of the call that you get, because one of the things that I tell my leaders is just like when you feel that conviction slipping, whether and it'll happen a couple of different ways, the installers will start, you'll get delayed and deals will cancel and then customers will give like, you know, bad feedback. All of that stuff seeks seeps into our feet like subconsciously it's not a conscious thought where i'm just like damn like i'm i'm tired of selling solar like is this even like good for people but that's the energy that i start to give off versus when i'm talking to homeowners that are like super grateful and they do what, what just happened to you they call you back they're ready to give referrals they're so thankful like you, you know you help their family out a lot like now they get to do x y and z then you feel on fire again so it's like I would find time at, at make a time like every point in the day, whether if it's 10 minutes or whatever, before I get on the doors to go back and either like look at my good reviews, even if you got to read good reviews from, from, from one up solar on their Google list or other videos, period, it could be YouTube, Google, it don't even have to be your customers, but you have to offset the amount of wear and tear that comes from the job. And then negative stuff that you read online with good information about what you're doing because you are a good person. And in order for your tank to keep going, you have to constantly feel like you are doing the right thing. And it's gotta be so much stronger than the life and then the negative like feedback from getting the door slammed in our face and no shows, et cetera. And the way that you always keep that conviction high is for you personally is gonna be like, I need to always know that I'm doing the right thing for people and I'm taking care of people. So the way that you do that is every single day you find time to watch videos, read books, about all of the good stuff about solar. You call old customers that got installed, even call some of your dad's old customers. Like if he's, I would imagine like if he's kind of running and gunning too, like he has this big Rolodex of people that he's called and, and then take time, like whether it's weekly or monthly, call people that he sold three months ago. Hey, we just wanted to check in and see how your experience was going. Thank you so much for being a customer. By the way, what family or friends do you have right now that could also benefit from some of those same experiences? So you do two things on that call. A, you get to obviously check in with that customer, thank them for the business again, get the referral. But then once they're telling you of, oh man, yeah, it's been great. Me and my, we didn't have that $500 utility bill in the summer. Like, yeah, it's been working really well. And then you get that positive dopamine hit from knowing that, that you guys are doing a good thing. So I would do that, um, especially with you being like, you know, again, a month in, you might not, or three months in, you might not have that big Rolodex of customers, but it doesn't need to be your customer. It could be one-ups customers from Google, Facebook. It could really be any YouTube video of somebody that had a good experience about solar and how well it took them. But we got to, I'll tell you, man, like I, I try to stay out of the Facebook groups and all the other stuff because there's so much negativity. People talk about other companies and lenders and all this stuff. And it's like, guys, we are selling ourselves and we sell energy and we sell conviction. We don't have panels in the trunk when we come in the home. You showed up with a PDF. People are going to start spending thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars with you off of that PDF that you created because they're buying you, they're buying your words, they're buying your energy. So they can't touch the panels. That's not what they're buying. So when we show up, whether we're walking down the street or showing up at the kitchen table, we got to make sure that energy and that conviction is high. Uh, that's number one. Another like really quick point is like, especially for newer people. And this was the the I'll tell you about my my very first solar deal. I closed. I was fortunate enough to close my first at bat. And I think the difference for me was I wasn't trying to close and I'm never trying to close. I'm always going into the home. Literally, as I'm walking in, there's one thing that I'm working on. Like, do you watch uh, are you a basketball fan by chance? Yeah, yeah, definitely. OK, so one of the things that I, I'm not too happy with him right now, but one of the things that I respect a lot about LeBron that confuses a lot of people is that when he steps out on the court, you know, a lot of the criticism he's gotten over the last last years is just like, oh, he don't have that dog. And I'm like, he's not a killer like Kobe. 
But LeBron was always approaching every season with a specific thing to work on. It's like, oh, I'm working on defense. I'm working on assists. I'm working on getting, you know, two and four better this year, whatever, like a, a small thing. So for me, I would go into the home, like if, if my uh, closing percentage was down or my rapport building was like not ideal, like I'm going in with that. I'm like, hey, I'm not working. I'm not focused on closing. I'm not even so much focused on the presentation. On this appointment, my main thing is to make this this person or this family like love me in the rapport stage. If I can do that, it's a win for me. And then vice versa, it's like if there was an aspect of the presentation that I didn't really do a good job on with my last couple appointments, I'm like, all right, cool. I, the win for me today is going to be me getting doing uh, the money slides really, really well, like executing those and making the customer have that light bulb moment or getting the customer to finance. But you don't want to judge yourself on your ability to do this job based on whether you close or not. Always judge yourself on controllable things. We can't control if they open the door. We can't control if they have approved credit. And there's a lot of things we can do to, to try to get them closed. But ultimately, there's way too many factors. What happens is, you know, you have people coming in. They may start hard. They might start cold. But over time, they start to judge themselves on all these things that are out of their control. And that's super not fair. So show up every single appointment. Just have one specific thing that you can control that's in, uh, in just totally within your control. Right. Even if it's like, all right, if I don't close, I'm a, if, if I get a, you know, we need time today, I'm going to make sure that I try at least three times before I get up and leave. Like I have a lot of people like that where they feel uncomfortable in that moment. It's just like I want you to sit there long enough to, to figure out how far you can go before either you get kicked out of the house or the customer is like visibly like totally done. Right. Because that's going to be a win for you in the long run. Does that make sense so far? No, for sure. Um, what questions about maybe any of that do you have? I just want to pause and check in a little bit. No, it, it sounds like it. And a lot of times, like those guys are, they have to keep, it, it's like a no soliciting sign. A no soliciting sign is like, uh, you know, you go out on a date with someone and they tell you early in the day, like nothing's happening tonight. Like people only say that they're really saying it to themselves. You know what I'm saying? So him, by him saying like, I'm not, it's already a no. He's probably impulsively bought things in the past and then regretted it. So now he's trying to train his brain to do something different because he's more than likely an impulsive purchaser. And a lot of times you can like look at certain things around their home and tell whether they are um, are like that or not. Like they might have like some extreme hobby of like trinket cars or just like whatever the case may be. Um, but I, let's talk about that order for a second. And I, li- I like I, I'm big on respect at the beginning of the appointment. So like for me, like if you were to shadow an appointment with me, I'll make them turn the TV off. And I, but I don't do it in like a, a rude way or like a, a stern way. Like I'll try to make a joke on it first. But if the person is out about it, and I was like, hey, look, no problem. This only takes about an hour left. I'll, this could power this home and be like a tremendous value to you because it worked like A, B, and C for my last customer. But I just want to make this super quick. Like it gives any way we can turn the music off, turn the whatever off. My phone is on silent. So I'm not checking my phone. I just want to be totally attentive to you. Uh, can we do that? And then I'll get you this information. And then if it works for you, we'll talk about next steps. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna get out of your hair. And so that's what I do for the TV. For the bill, you wanna leverage it this way. Say, hey, there's a couple of things, just like you said before. Well, A, I need the usage off of the bill in order to be able to design that system for you. And then there's also a couple of things on the bill that I wanna show you. So we get the bill first. When those customers, I like to sit down first, I'll make sure they're sitting down so that they have to get up and then go get the bill. I like if the bills are not at the table. I don't want to get them all the way seated down so that I could give them a command. This kind of sounds like psychotic, but there's a lot oh, of no, psychology. I, I, yeah. I definitely know. My dad tells me that type of stuff too. Just even yeah. like telling them to get your water and certain things, they're getting mm-hmm. used to saying yes to you in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well, I mean, it's, it's less about yes, but it's, it's a gauge on the customer to see like, are you cooperative? Because when you get there and the guy's like, yeah, no, nah, I don't got a bill. And it's like, well, bro, what? I can't do anything without a bill. Like, can you go get it? I don't know where it's at. Okay, well, we can't do anything without a bill. We can come back another time. Or is there a bill that you can get online? We could also call the utility company unless you think that there's a bill that you can find around the house. And then on that second time that I have to talk to them, I have to talk to them like that. And like, okay, I'm ready to get out of here if you can't do it. But that's going to do two things to, to that cold customer. He's cold, especially with us younger guys, because he's like, there's a, he wants to see if he, uh, will respect you yet so you've got to put yourself like equal with him if he don't see you equal he's not going to do business with you it's the same way with like uh foreigners at times like they they only want to do like uh asians for instance not to and this is not a derogatory comment but like 
respect is, is their biggest thing in business. Like they have to feel like they're buying a purchase from someone that they respect. If they feel like the salesperson is weak, it does not matter how good the deal is. They don't want to purchase the thing, even if they want the thing a lot. If they feel like the person selling it to them is a, is a weak salesperson and they can push them around or like look on their phone or do whatever, they, they purposely won't buy from it. So for me, it's like, okay, let me see how cooperative you are. And if you're not cooperative, I'm going to check you. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to get out of here because if I sit here for an hour and you don't respect me and you're not cooperative, you're not going to buy anyway. So I would rather go cloverleaf and, and, and cloverleaf this, 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 uh, this house to sit here just for you to give me a no at the end. So get the bill first, um, tell them like, hey, it's a part of the process. Obviously I need you know time to design the system. That's the main thing. Also wanna break down some of the charges for you. This is how you segue from the bill into the discovery form. So as you're killing the bill, if you remember that part, um, you then start to fill out the discovery form with the correct spelling of their name. You get their email, you start to ask them about their HOA. <gasps> Excuse me, I got the hiccups, all that good stuff. And then you segue into the discovery questions that really opens up the whole, uh, the whole form of, uh, I'm sorry, the whole conversation of discovery in a very smooth way. So you don't have to get there and be like, so uh, you, where are you from? You know what I'm saying? Like, which I don't have a problem doing, you probably don't either. But in this way, you have a, a, a replicatable format that your body will start doing on autopilot because it, we, can, we can wing it on the doors because really it only takes like one to two minutes to drum up that interest on the doors and then, you know, less than five total minutes to have that conversation about the appointment. But if we wanna be able to sell you know, $40,000 in an hour or hour and a half or whatever the case may be, like you have to have a replicatable process that you can do on autopilot because your body's moving, but you're totally in tune with the customer. But what I have guys doing is like, they're trying to think about what they can say next and think about the presentation. You gotta have the presentation memorized. You have to do the same process so that each customer is in front of you the words that are coming out of your mouth, they're on autopilot, but you are, you're paying attention to the customer's body language, his energy, is, is his arms crossed, is he leaning in, is he on the same side of the table with me? Like, is the wife up walking around cleaning? Like, do I need to talk to her as well? Like, those are all the most important things that I'm really paying attention to. In the solar talk, my, my, again, my body's just doing it because it's just so routine. So uh, get the bill first, make them respect you, set the tone early, because if they don't respect you, they're not gonna buy anyways. And even if they get all the way to the end, they're going to shake you down on price. Uh, what, can, what can you do about that price? Can you do anything? Can you do anything? People don't buy things off of price, man. And, and pay attention when you're showing up to somebody's home. They don't have a cheap car. They don't have the cheapest house. They don't want the cheapest solar system. They just need perceived value, right? So um, I'm going to slow down a little bit. What questions about that um, do you have? Mm -hmm. I know, I, I know sometimes it can feel awkward too, because you're showing up to their house and you're like, yo, turn the, turn the TV off in your own house because I need to talk. But like, you know, at the same point, you're giving them so much value, right? Like they're not giving you any money. You're about to put 20, 30K worth of equity. You're about to lower that utility bill. You're about to get a federal tax credit, maybe another rebate from the utility company. So as you're in the home and even on the streets pitching, always remember you are doing them far big of a favor than the small amount of money that you'll receive in commission. Before they reach PTO, they're going to get five to six times the amount of money in equity on their home than you will receive in commission. So anytime like you feel, ah, this person is making me feel whatever, it's like you, you helping them. Like you literally are doing them a solid and it's important to remember that at all times. But yeah, man, that's a, um, that's a big one. Like we'll have people sitting in recliners, like right in front of the TV, like, yeah, 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 go ahead. I'm listening. It's like, nah, we need this off. We need you to pay attention because this is going to be really good for you or it could be. Uh, but if this game is more important, we can definitely reschedule you and then just kind of see how they feed from there. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. And I know you got a, I think you got a five o'clock, so um, I'll, I'll keep this, keep this, uh, keep you on time. If I were you today, I would focus on, on just that format. Like, right. Like I'm getting the bill right away. I'm setting the tone. I'm making sure the respect is there and I'm going from bill to discovery form, then presentation. Right. And just making sure that you start to create a process that you can replicate every single time. And then also, are you, do you design the proposal while you're there or you do it before you go? Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, we, okay, we, we can talk about that next week. So uh, for this, uh, right now, like I said, I would, I would really focus on that and make it, just get that first piece. And then next week, we'll go into both uh, some presentation work and then like what you're doing at the close. Uh, but again, for this week, that first part will be the best. I love that you already have kind of the territory management on lock. Um, whether you rotate certain scripts on the door, I don't really think that's that that important um, as far as like saying the same thing every single time on the door because everybody is going to be a little bit different. 
But if you're already generating a lot, it's really just about sticking to a schedule. Treat the doors like it's the hourly job and like you just you just can't go wrong. Um, mm-hmm. Other than that, I don't want to throw too much at you. This is recorded, so I will uh, send it to you in Telegram and you can rewatch it. And then I'll drop some notes from today and then uh, also things for next week. Um, but because you're about to go on appointment, I'm not trying to throw too much at you. But um, any final questions for uh, for today for me? No, no, that's great. That's a lot of good stuff. I'm going to use it, implement it right away. Perfect, perfect. I'm glad it was helpful, man. Um, yeah, man, I, I can't wait to see you uh, super successful and, and continue to march in the same direction, man. I, I feel like you got a great heart for for this field and like like uniquely positioned to do really well in it for a long time. A lot of people who really don't care about people are in it just for the money. And we need money. I don't knock anybody for their hustle. Like you got to need the half money to pay your bills and feed your family. So I'm not mad at anybody. But again, for people who, who genuinely like taking care of people, this can be a perfect, perfect place. But just remember that you are going to have to do the extra mile to make sure that your tank is always full of conviction. If you do that, you will never see another drought. If you just constantly make sure the wear and tear from life and the not closing and the tired of being on the doors, if I just feed my mind with all the reasons why I keep doing this, the old customers that love me, the more customers I'm going to help, like all this stuff, if this is if this is so much more like impactful and in your head on a daily basis than this, then then you'll win. But when it splits, like you'll feel it. You'll get tired. You'll be you won't pitch the same. Your energy will be low. Your tonality will be low. So at the end of the day, like you just always got to be pumped up, right? Just like we got a basketball game, a football game, like just get get real hype before you do it uh, every single time, and, and you'll win. So, but yeah, man. Uh, but good luck tonight. Uh, hit me in Telegram. Let me know how it goes, uh, and then anything else I can do to help it, help you prepare for for either this weekend or next week. Okay.